which is mistakes of diagnosis and management of corneal ulcer where Dr. J. K. Reddy is a very accomplished uh, cataract and corneal surgeon, a senior surgeon from Shankara Eye Foundation, Coimbatore. Dr. J. K. Thank you, sir. Um, just uh, go to the common things which I see in my clinical practice uh, with my fellows or with my <coughs> colleagues or from the refer from the other places. <coughs> Few slides and not very elaborate a little bit. So you see a case like that, it's very easy. You know, anybody will say it's a dendritic ulcer and treat straight away. But when it comes here, this is the question. When I see, even now, when I see a patient like this, when already stain, fluorescent stain done by my fellow or by uh, other consultant comes to me, it's very difficult to differentiate this one, either it's an early fungal or a dendritic ulcer. I had to see without a fluorescent stain again or take addition or well, it's uh, very difficult, this, this one, to differentiate. So if you have real doubt, whether it's an early fungal or a dendritic ulcer, a viral, herpetic ulcer, but the best way of managing is, though it's not very logical, the best way of managing is give systemic antivirals and give topical uh, antifungals. That's the best way of getting rid of the problem. Otherwise, you land up, if you treat this as a dendritic ulcer, herpetic ulcer, and if it's a fungal, by the time patient comes, especially in the pupil area, you lose the uh, precious time and the vision. Then coming back, this, 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 this is the common thing we see once in a while. Patient won't have any pain, nothing, mild irritation and discomfort and little drop of vision. If you look at that, there is a linear, opacity, a linear, uh, one linear lesion here running across. And if you do a fluorescent stain, you can see a one at the same time, you can see a small line. This is the what we saw, I saw in practice. A lot of people, they think it's herpetic and give them antivirals. And it becomes epithelial toxicity will increase and they become much, much worse to the patients. This is we consider in this part, this is a nutritional keratopathy and we give him, them a lot of vitamins and check for uh, hemoglobin and uh, B12, uh, serum B12, and they improve very well. Even topical lubricant doesn't work in these cases. This, this is a horizontal linear, you will have a uh, lesion. Of we call keratinized epithelium. Actually, it's not a breakdown of epithelium, it is a keratinized epithelium. That is different from a herpetic ulcer. Then comes here. This is the red eye. There is a strenuous favorite from first one. Patient with red eye, of some time, some treatment. He comes with all the SPK or like this. This is also treating this with the antiviral doesn't make any sense. If at all, it may be adenoviral. But the new thing, not new thing, is there for some time. We missed it. Now we are diagnosed microsporidiasis. You should remember. And everyone cannot have a laboratory to grow this one because it doesn't grow in culture. You have to only micros, uh, this, uh, microbiological workup only will prove it. This one, very, very, very typical. It's typically different from regular post-viral adenoviral SPK. So this should be treated as a microsporidiasis. This is the same patient and different view. And coming back, this, this is very interesting. We had many, many cases, not one or two. We have many cases like that. Persistent epithelial defect, fluorescent stain positive, and treated with all steroids, antibiotics, not steroids, antibiotics, antivirals, and culture done, scraping done. So this one, you see a, more than for at least for a week or two days, sometimes for a, more than that. Then if you have fluorescent stain, here is the clue. You have a positive, but congenital is also positive. Congenital fluorescent stain is very, very, very rare. That's a hallmark of foreign body. Then if you look at the lid, you can see a nice foreign body and the tarsal. You have to find it. It will be there. Uh, some, the eye is so red, sometimes you can't find it. You put a drop of uh, phenylephrine and uh, nephazoline, then again see the patient. Then after blanching, you will find that tarsal. This is commonly we call probably due to caterpillar hair. The hair, they are so sharp. They go and hit it. They stay there and they produce it. All you have to do is just remove that. That's the treatment. Then coming back, the other one is the bee sting injury. The patient comes with a bee sting injury. You can see a bee sting here and the hypopion. The moment we see it, hypopion and posterior corneal block lesion, we think probably it's fungal, bacterial, and we don't use steroids. That's the biggest mistake we are going to do it. We have to remove bee sting, but this patient, we treat her right from the first day on steroids, and it improves very well. Within 15, 20 days, the patient improves. If you don't treat with steroids, they will either go for uh, uh, chronic uveitis and permanent endothelial damage. 
and this is very common okay it's very simple marginal characteristics but when it comes like that all around then comes the problem these are the cases i saw many times they treated as puk and investigated but it's nothing like it's not puk puk is entirely different no puk patient for us came in so early stage in my 25 years of practice they come only after epithelium is broken down and a gutter forms and pain starts at this stage no puk has come but two books have given the earliest puk stage is subepithelial uh, infiltrate but this is a classical uh, marginal keratitis in exaggerated form you need a both uh, topical antibiotic along with steroids and this one is very interesting corneal inf uh, cellular infiltrate epithelium is intact epithelium is intact and the corneal cellular infiltrate is treated with uh, antibiotics and antifungals um, for a long time more than a week and patients having pain the clue is when you look at this is a retro elimination just having its own eyes it looks like just for a photographic point of view otherwise it looks like that there is a scleral inflammation surrounding this is a typical sclerokeratitis there will be a, some patients will have a lucid interval between the keratitis infiltrates and this needs is just a steroids nothing more than that you know, putting antibiotics antifungals doesn't help in these cases of course this is a fasciculo ulcer it's a, it's a, an, another big problem they they need a long long prolonged uh, treatment with both to topical antibiotics and uh, steroids they need a really once you stop they come back so you have to really treat for a long time before it involves then this is the one a coin shaped lesion this is one usually treated as antifungal with the antifungal treatment sometimes as a uh, bacterial and it doesn't heal and if you see carefully you have a pinhead like lesion small 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 it's very typical of nocardia the nocardia is you have a lesion here you have a lesion here in between trauma almost no infiltrate it looks normal so nothing has happened so these all needs a my amikacin eye drops and this is a, a zoom uh, photograph and it sometimes it doesn't look like even infiltrate it looks like some something wrong with the cornea that's all then uh, it, it heals very well with amikacin eye drops and 50 um, 5 mg and it works wonders and this is the same another case of nocardia see very typical You see uh, here, 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 there, here, there, lesions, pinhead, or may not be like a pinhead. These are irregular pinheads, and in between, stroma all very clear. It's very typical of anocardia, and it heals very well. That's the beauty of it. See, this is that so bad ulcer with amikacin after two months treatment is completely cardia comes to the normal. This is the one, another biggest problem. This is the infiltrate, a small infiltrate with some injury or unknown injury cause. and looks is suspicious of fungus but there is no feathery borders nothing this is most of the time these are fungal uh, infiltrates and you have to do a koh mount at least and uh, why it's a fungus is in bacterial always you don't get a sharp border this sharp border will not be there there will be some amount of cellular infiltrates beyond the infiltrate in the untreated bacterial ulcer so if you don't see cellular infiltrate in the corneal stroma you see only the yellow infiltrate very short borders that's mostly fungal then coming back to uh, coming this another non healing ulcers with a um, uh, uh, infiltrate like that corneal infiltrate with a border like that this is again a very hallmark of staphylococcus infection and uh, you can use steroids in staphylococcus infection then uh, along with antibiotics of course and vancomycin is our drug we, we tried many many things many things but nothing like vancomycin once you suspect staphylococcus and if it is a referred patient to you straight away go for vancomycin this is the one is the beautiful one so it looks so so thing so anybody say, just say it's what is there big deal in it it's a fungal and ophthalm fungal corneal infection but look at that look at the corneal section in slit lamp absolutely clear epithelium fluorescent say negative patient is already treated with uh, antifungal treatment and the stroma in, fit, in, uh, in front of the infiltrate is absolutely clear and even in sections this case is this is another case like that they need anti chamber tap and anti chamber uh, oriconazole for the cure of this condition and this is another one non healing corneal ulcer infiltrate this is very typical of neurotrophic ulcer anastric cornea neurotrophic cornea where there is con to corneal congestion will be totally be absent so this only treatment is tarsorophy nothing else works we have to convince the patient some of some of sometimes we do bilateral tarsorophy also and if you don't do it they will become like that they, they just melts off and perforates and atheromatous ulcer another very nice one 
they break down. Patient says, it happens once in three years, four years. Then I go and they give lubricants, it, it heals. But every time it breaks down, some amount of ethylene, some amount of stroma will disappear. So after four or five episodes, mm -hmm. it will perforate. If you think the previous surgeon has just treated with uh, lubricants and antibiotics is fine, I also do that, and patients insist on that. If you do that, you will be in trouble. The sixth time, seventh time, if you are treating, it just perforates. And this is the one eyed patient we had, and some SI sector hydrectomy, of a kick, and uh, athromatous ulcer. It took almost two days, two or three days for him to convince that we had to do a lamellar patch graft for this patient. And another one, a patient like this comes, generally we think it's not solvable, a NK and uh, anti cephaloma, perforated ulcer with anti cephaloma. You just leave it out, but don't worry, just go ahead and do grafts. You got a good, this is a photograph 10 years after surgery. The patient had retained eye and he had around 5 by 60, 6 by 60 vision, and uh, this is after therapeutic grafting. So never hesitate to do a therapeutic grafting in any stage of corneal ulcer, even if it's a full anti cephaloma or whatever maybe. This is another patient, more than two months treated. It's fine, one month, two months. Then you just, so what's the your treatment, you got it. Then he gave so much, so many papers he's filing. So the moment you see it, you don't think that you are going to do some miracle or something like that. Just straight away go for drugs doesn't work. You tell the patient, drugs doesn't work. They tried all the drugs available in ophthalmology. Just go ahead with surgery. Is a therapeutic graft or lamellar. We did a, this acanthamoeba, we did a lamellar therapeutic graft. He's doing beautiful, very nice. Uh, recovery of the vision. This is another uh, example where patient is partially treated. He went to the doctor and treated and is going on treatment and it's healing, actually it's healing. But patient wants second opinion, why so many days I'm having trouble. So they come to you, then you are in trouble, whether to tell the same treatment continue or you want to change it. That is the biggest mistake we did. We had to assess the uh, one. Once this is all clear margins healed, here still there is ulcer. So it is responding to treatment. So you tell them it's responding, you are, you are, don't change. Please don't change any treatment, any not even a single, another brand also, please don't change, just let him.